All right, birth complications. These are things that we are learning about literally every day. Scientists are discovering a reason or a cause of potentially affecting the um, safety of uh, the unborn fetus. So being born preterm is one complication, for example, that can be a predictor of later development. A preterm baby is not as a full-term baby because they did not live inside the ideal home all the way until they are ready to come out to the outside world. Genetically vulnerable is another thing that we talked about in chapter three. We said how you might be inheriting a chromosome that carries a gene that just happened to be a liability and could pretty much expose you or be the predictor of a later uh, delay or development or disease that you have to contend with. So this is another example of a complication that might have to uh, uh, present itself at birth. Mother's age is very critical. Too young might have complications that are different than too old. A stressed mother or a mother that was ill through the pregnancy might also contribute to the potential of a complication at birth. And the one and most important complication can be caused by teratogens. Teratogens are any agents or conditions, including viruses, drugs, or chemicals that could interfere, could affect that fetus from developing to the full potential. We are in the stage of going through one teratogen that we don't know much about, and that is COVID-19. At this moment, we don't know the implications of this virus on the fetus. We thought that the fetus was not affected. We are now learning that some of those newborns are actually testing positive. Another example is alcohol consumption. We know that there is no such thing as one drink is not harmful. Any amount of alcohol is possibly um, uh, a problem given the complication of who you are, how your body is, what is your metabolism. It, it just, there is no such thing as uh, predicting um, the outcome based on uh, who you are. So given all those teratogens, there are so many things that um, uh, women can actually be exposed to without even realizing that they are and can affect them um, and uh, they wouldn't before even realizing that they were pregnant it could very well be in uh, exposure in the in the air uh, environmental exposure it could be um, uh, something that they consumed uh, before they realized that they were pregnant it could be um, um, uh, something that they went through a period in their life when they were uh, very stressed or the loss of a loved one that affected their emotional well-being and um, that could have harmed the baby. Everything that happens on the outside affects the inside and that is what makes pregnancy so critical. Not to scare everyone but to make everyone who is potentially thinking of being pregnant, of how important that um, uh, development is to what's coming later on. And there is no such thing as when the baby's born, then we can take care of it. You're taking care of that baby literally from the minute of conception. Now, the factors that influence the effects of teratogens is, of course, as we said, the critical time that it was consumed. Um, a mother that consumed the um, uh, thalidomide during the period of the uh, extremities and the uh, limbs formation is not going to be affected the same way as a mother who might had it at uh, month 
uh, eight or nine. So this is where the period or the timing of uh, ingestion or uh, consumption makes a big difference. The dose or the frequency of exposure, how much, how many times. One time might not be a, a, a big deal for certain bodies, but it might be critical for another body. And um, how much of that frequency, how often was she exposed, let's say, to that harmful uh, pollution or that harmful, um, you know, virus, whatever it is, there we go again with the different bodies react differently. So no one to, uh, can predict uh, the extent of that harm until uh, sadly it's too late. Genetic vulnerability is also uh, important because uh, some bodies can tolerate things more than others and um, you might be born with, like we said, a genetic liability that makes it really hard for you to bounce back from um, an exposure. All right, one particular um, uh, teratogen that is worthy of uh, noting is alcohol consumption. And alcohol consumption, um, you know, unanimously, um, professional scientists and doctors and, psychi and psychologists would say that um, really you wouldn't want to risk it. So not a single uh, drink is worth um, uh, um, harming a fetus that could very well be uh, affected by it. So uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder or FASD is an acronym that is replacing what it was uh, uh, previously called fetal alcohol syndrome, which is basically um, what happens to the fetus if the mother consumed alcohol. It could produce a baby that is um, harmed uh, in, in a, a neurological way. The neuroconnectivity and in, 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 uh, cognitive development is affected, and it could very well be also the behavioral uh, um, uh, 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 way uh, that the child uh, uh, does is affected because of that consumption. Uh, typical um, uh, look of a baby that uh, is suffering from um, uh, fetal alcohol uh, syndrome is uh, a flattened nose uh, small eye openings, small heads um, for, for their age, and um, of course, uh, sadly, intellectual delays and behavioral problems. So these are all things that um, usually when, when they are uh, present, uh, some or all, uh, the, the, the doctor would start to look into the history of the mother and uh, look into possibly um, the exposure that caused that baby to be born with such uh, liabilities. All right, so now that we have the baby, uh, it's very important to look at um, who is taking care of them uh, of that baby. So we're gonna look at the mother and we're gonna say that um, it is very important to pay attention to the well-being of the mother physically and emotionally. Uh, about half of all women will experience physical problems after birth. This is just part of the uh, of the process. Uh, giving birth is exhausting. Uh, there might be some uh, stitches that happen due to the natural delivery. There might be some stitches that happen due to a cesarean delivery. There might be uh, some complications due to the uh, delivery either way and therefore the body is uh, exhausted from that process. But what's more critical is emotionally. Between 8 and 15 percent of women experience what is called postpartum depression. Postpartum depression is an extremely important um, uh, concept that people need to pay attention to due to the fact that it could uh, not only harm the mother, but it could also harm the child. It's a feeling of inadequacy. It's a feeling of depression and sadness that overwhelms the, uh, the mother, the new mom. And it starts to actually 
uh, cause uh, um, uh, some uh, lethal thoughts uh, about her ability and uh, sometimes it, it ends up with a, 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 a psychosis and the mother uh, could possibly harm the baby because of that feeling of inadequacy. Um, there are many ca uh, causes for it. It's hormonal changes and any um, mother who goes through pregnancy in general, not just delivery, but pregnancy has a lot of hormonal changes that are happening in her body. So baby blues are typical, but what we're talking about here is past the baby blues. It's going into now um, a state of um, uh, depression and uh, that could very well transfer into a mental health problem where the mother can be really uh, at risk uh, her, on, uh, for her life or her baby's life. Uh, it could also be triggered by environmental uh, uh, factors. It could be a financial stress because of that baby uh, and lack of work or lack of assets. It could be marital problems if the parent, the other um, partner was not able to um, uh, acknowledge the, the existence of the baby or take uh, uh, charge. Um, it could also be due to the infant itself. If the baby was born with certain um, health problems or even as simple as a baby who was born colic and just uh, cries a lot, um, that could be very well uh, overwhelming for the mom who is deprived of uh, sleep and uh, is is emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted, and lacking sleep. So there's a lot of contributing factors, and that's why having an alliance, having a support system around uh, the the new mother is very critical for her safety, for her well-being, and for her babies. Um, what about the fathers? Well, fathers may experience pregnancy and birth. Uh, both psychologically and biologically. And it has been documented, the case of Kobad is actually a uh, sympathetic pregnancy where the parent, uh, uh, the mother is pregnant and the father is starting to show symptoms of uh, pregnancy, such as uh, weight gain or um, uh, acid reflux or uh, some uh, sleeplessness. So those are some of those symptoms that um, males might experience. And um, in some cultures, it is expected. And in some other cultures, there it's actually uh, um, laughable. But the truth is, um, these are uh, uh, cases that have been documented and um, are actually true. Uh, prenatal alliances, what I talked about, is forming that support network around the mother to help her get through uh, 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 the first uh, few days and, and months. And um, uh, one um, very interesting concept, kangaroo care, can actually be beneficial for uh, not only the, uh, the mother or the father, but also for... Um, the infant. So it's a form of newborn care uh, where the baby is um, laid naked on the chest of the parent naked as well. So what is happening is a skin to skin interaction. And that has been shown to actually reduce, uh, um, slow down the, um, uh, the heartbeat and regulate it and uh, comfort and um, of course, whenever we're talking about um, uh, uh, physical development, we're also talking about neurological development. So we'll see later how all of these actions can actually support the connections in the brain and that attachment that's later going to be the cornerstone of healthy development.